bit of a different video today. I'm going to be doing a timing belt on a 2014 GTD uh, Mark 7 Golf. And I couldn't find any other videos as such or like directions on how to do it. I'm assuming because it's still fairly new. And I thought I might as well make a video to help anybody else out that's going to do it in the future. So I've got it in there. I'm taking wheel off, driver's side, or if it's left hand drive, then yours will be passenger side. So I'm going to start by taking this bottom half of the arch liner out. And it's just these T25s. So there's one there, two, three, uh, four, and then there's some on the under tray, five, six. And then some at the front here, seven, eight. I think that one, those two might need to come out as well. So, ten in total. There's six underneath, and then the remaining four are in the actual arch. All right, so I've got the bottom half of this arch liner out. And now I'm just gonna take the aux belt off so I can take the crank pulley and the timing covers off. So, 16 mil spanner and, um, I'm presuming this is going to be the same on other models that don't have AC. So we're going to be going left, up, like like that. And you can see that's taking the tension off the belt. So I need two hands to be able to do this, so I'm going to take the belt off and then we'll come back to taking the crank pulley off. So now the belt's off, I'm going to be taking these four bolts out of the crank pulley, which are an M10 spline, or triple square some people call it. And I'm going to be cheating a little bit and using an impact gun. But you can probably use a normal ratchet, but you'd have to find a way of securing the crank pulley. Which is going to be either holding onto the crank pulley, uh, the crank bolt, or maybe getting something to grab onto the actual pulley itself. Right, those bolts are out now, but the actual pulley is still stuck on, so let's give it a quick tap with a copper hammer. That's loose now. Still not keen on coming off though. There we go. Right, so first learning curve is the timing marks for this engine are actually on the crank pulley rather than on the end of the crankshaft like they were on the older engines which is what I'm used to doing so if you look up here see that timing mark there's one on the pulley and there's one on the actual plastic housing that says OT so now I've lined that up I can remove this pulley again T25 there, one up there, and then there's two up there, there's one just up here by the light. So you see that cut out there, there's one in there, and then there's one in here, there's another cut out there. Which you might be able to see now, there, that's the cut out. So in total there's four T25s holding the bottom half of the timing cover on. So I'm going to take the timing cover off, lock the crank, and then work on the top half. As you can see, there's four bolts. One, two, three, four. And that's the lower half of the timing cover off. Right, now I'm up top. I'm going to have to take this cover off here. It's one long piece, front to back. Uh, so I'm going to have to take these pipes out of the way. Uh, probably just unhook them from where they are, so a few hose clamps and then there's these silver pipes that go up to these DPF sensors that's what they look like anyway uh, and then they go down there, down the side of there so I'm probably going to un unhook the pipe from there and then remove the whole thing and I'll be able to get the plastic cover out Right, so now I've got the upper timing cover off there's these two tabs here to release it that one and that one there's a T25 that goes in there that holds these pipes for the DPF sensors on. And there's a little heat shield that goes on the back here, screws into there, that's a T20, that heat shield. And once you've undone all those, you've got to sort of wiggle it out a bit, and then you're left with that. Next, we're going to be taking tension off the belt 
and removing the belt. I'll be able to cut this belt because it's the old one. Replace this tensioner and then we're replacing the water pump which is there just underneath the belt and then I've got to remove the engine mount to get the new belt in. Right, I've got the old belt off now and the tension is almost off. I've got to remove the engine mount for it to uh, come off properly. I've replaced the water pump from underneath. It's three M10 spline bolts and then this needs to go back through there. There's like a little socket for it to clip into here. There's like a little cut out. So that goes in there and then plugs into that down, down the back side of there. So I've got my engine spotted from underneath. I'm going to take this engine mount off and then this big block here so I can get the old belt out and get the new belt in and then also change the tensioner whilst I'm there. Um, I've pinned the fuel pump so if you take the belt off and don't pin it it'll just spin round and then you'll lose where it were but there's like a little fork at the back of the fuel pump here and you've got to line it up with the hull and then shove the pin in. Um, I've put a little mark on here a white line just to keep the position of where the cam was. I think you can lock it through these holes but I haven't tried it. I've just put a, a mark there for reference. And then I'm taking off this engine mount. I've had to move the coolant bottle. It's just these two little clips here. And then that unclips from, from those two holes there. And then I just lifted it up and put it over there. The fuel filter is two 10mm bolts that go in there and a 10mm nut on there, which I'll need an extension to get to. And that gives us loads more room. Right, so I took that engine mount out, it's just two two bolts here, two bolts on that, and then this bolt here, which you don't have to take out, you can just lift it up and swivel it off. So then I jacked the engine up so I could get to this bolt here, which is a 16, all three of them are 16s that hold it on, <coughs> the other two you've got to do from underneath. So then once I'd undone this bolt, I uh, moved it down and out of the way so I could get the belt off and then dropped it down like that so I could get the tensioner off. Right, so I've replaced the belt now, it's fully rooted and I've replaced the upper tensioner, uh, the upper idler, the tensioner and the lower idler right down there, you can barely see. Uh, the water pump's obviously been replaced and all the timing marks are still in place, so that pin's in place. The timing mark there line up, and the one on the cranks line on the crank lines up as well. So now we've just got to put the tensioner in the right place. So this arrow here has to line up with the middle of that groove on the back plate. So if I get the Allen key and turn it right round, see how the tension comes on the belt there, tensions it up nicely. Then if I keep turning. It brings the arrow around eventually, but you need you need uh, two hands for it really, and then you can turn it and tighten it. All right, so I've got the fuel filter back in, the coolant reservoir back in, and I've put the DPF pipes back on. I just need to put the clips on. Um, the DPF sensor is back in, so just the fuel lines from both sides and the coolant line to go back onto the bottle and then all the hose clamps to double check and that should be it other than obviously putting the bottom end back together which is just the lower timing cover and the crank pulley and the auxiliary belt but that's a fairly quick job and then once that's done obviously arch liner back in, wheel back on and fire it up, double check everything